Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Paul's Lutheran Church. It's a blessing. We, today we get to thank God for the blessing of technology that in spite of this pandemic, we can continue to gather together as, uh, as a Christian congregation and praise our Lord for all that he's done for us, especially during this time in Lent. I want to remind you that on the website, right under where you click for our live stream, you can also download the bulletin as well as uh, the, the sermon and you can, you can have that available if you'd like to. We are continuing in our sermon series for this midweek a sermon series on, in Lent, which you can see on your bulletin says, The Son of God Goes Forth to War. The Savior, he went to war for us in a number of different ways, fighting for us in our place. And today, specifically, we're going to be thinking about how he fights against the lies of this world with the truth that he came to testify to. We'll begin today with our opening hymn, hymn 121, Jesus Grant That Balm and Healing.
In the name of our God, to whom all hearts are open and from whom no secrets are hidden, amen. We pray. O Lord, Lord, hear my my prayer. prayer. Listen Listen to my my cry for mercy, mercy. and in In your your faithfulness faithfulness, come come to my my relief. relief. Do Do not not bring your servant servant into judgment, judgment, for no no one living is righteous before you. you. Answer Answer me quickly, O Lord. Lord. My My spirit spirit fails. Do Do not not hide your face face from me, for I have put put my trust in you. Show me the way I should go, for to you I lift up my soul. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a troubled and repentant sinner, confess that I have sinned against you in my thoughts, my words, and my actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I am distressed by the sins that trouble me. I am deeply sorry for them. Jesus says to his people, If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. His death paid for the guilt of your sins and the sins of the whole world. Do you believe this? Yes, Yes, I believe. Because of the promise of our Savior Jesus, I forgive you all your sins. Be assured that you are a dear child of God and an heir of eternal life. We pray. Lord God, we thank you for this day of grace now drawing to a close. Stay with us and warm our hearts with your forgiving love in Christ. May your word keep our faith burning brightly, that we may walk in the light of your presence through the darkness of this world. Come and bless us as we worship you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Out of the depths I cry to you, in darkest places I will call, incline your ear to me anew, and hear my cry for mercy, Lord. Were you to count my sinful ways, how could I come before your throne? Yet full forgiveness meets my case. I stand redeemed by grace alone. I will wait for you. Why do the nations conspire and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their chains and throw off their shackles. The one enthroned in heaven laughs. The Lord scoffs at them. He rebukes them in his anger and terrifies them in his wrath, saying, I have installed my king on Zion, my holy mountain, Therefore, you kings, be wise. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and celebrate his rule with trembling. Kiss his son, or he will be angry, and your way will lead to your destruction. For his wrath can flare up in a moment. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. pray. Lord God, you anointed your son to be king for the sake of your church. Help us as members of his kingdom to serve him faithfully and to come to the full knowledge of his grace and glory, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 We'll continue with our passion reading for this Lenten season. This is the final reading from the book of Matthew. 
Matthew chapter 27, starting at verse 27. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand. Then they knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. They spit on him and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink, mixed with gall, but after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots. And sitting down, they kept watch over him. Above his head, they placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two rebels were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, You who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are the Son of God. In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He's the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants, if he wants him, for he said, I am the son of God. In the same way, the rebels who were crucified with him also heaped insults on him. From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over all the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, He's calling Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with wine vinegar, put it on a staff, and offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split, and the tombs broke open. The bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life, they came out of the tombs after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, Surely he was the Son of God. Many women were there watching from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee to care for his needs. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of Joseph and James, and the mother of, ja the mother of Zebedee's sons. As evening approached, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body, and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and placed it in his own new tomb that he had cut out of the rock. He rolled a big stone in front of the entrance to the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were sitting there opposite the tomb. The next day, the one after preparation day, the chief priests and the Pharisees went to Pilate. Sir, they said, we remember that while he was still alive, that deceiver said, after three days I will rise again. So give the order for the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may come and steal the body and tell the people that he has been raised from the dead. This last deception will be worse than the first. Take a guard, Pilate answered. Go make the tomb as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone and posting the guard. This is God's word. 
All we like sheep have gone astray, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. By his wounds we are healed. We'll continue with our sermon to him, hymn 380, Lord, tis not that I did choose you. Our sermon today, we're going to be looking at one verse, John chapter 18, verse 38. It says this What is truth? retorted Pilate. With this, he went out again to the Jews gathered there and said, I find no basis for a charge against him. This is God's word. What is truth? What is truth? What is real? I think we can understand why Pilate asked the question that he did. Imagine being in his situation as he's trying to figure out who really is telling the truth. Is it Jesus or is it this crowd, this mob of angry people who's saying that Jesus is a fake and a fraud and a liar? And we can understand even with our judges in America today how difficult they have it as they try to figure out Who's telling the truth, even though they all swear that they are telling the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and yet you get two conflicting stories? How is that possible? We live in a world that's filled with lies, conspiracy theories, news stories where somebody is shouting out fake news, and the question is that we ask ourselves, well, is it? I don't know. We live at a time, it seems, when it is more difficult to manipulate the truth. It's difficult to know if a news story is correct. We have difficulty knowing if statistics are accurate or if they have been changed and manipulated, if a, a photo or a video has been changed or manipulated. How do we know what truth is? This last week, in fact, my wife and I saw something on the internet that said that McDonald's was going to be giving away free lunches to all children in Onalaska. And we thought, oh, this is great. We even told our children about it. And before we left, I said, you know what, let me just call them first. And I called them up, and there are no free lunches at McDonald's right now. In fact, the lady said she has been getting phone calls all day long because someone put something on the internet that said that McDonald's was giving away free lunches. 
How do you know what to trust? We don't know who to trust, who's telling the truth. And even with this pandemic, with the coronavirus, there are some reports out there, some conspiracy theories that this was a virus that was actually created in a laboratory and that is being used as a bioweapon to take down the United States. We struggle to figure out what is truth and what is real, whether it's a news story or a court case or even where to get a free lunch. But that truth, none of those truths matter nearly as much as the truth that our Savior is talking about in our lesson. A truth on which our eternal future depends. Let's look at our lesson for today. We live, Jesus had been standing in front of the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate, and he had to decide whether or not Jesus was going to be crucified. He had to figure out who was telling the truth here. And so he asked Jesus a very straightforward question. Are you a king or not? And Jesus' reply is this. He says in John 18, verse 37, You say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. Jesus says that the whole reason he came into this world was to testify the truth. His purpose was to be the truth, to proclaim the truth in this world, in a world full of lies, to tell the truth. And he even goes as far as the saying that there are sides here, that he's on the side of truth and that the rest of the world is on the side of lies. Who does one believe? Jesus says he's on the side of truth. And... He says that there is another side of lies. What Jesus is saying is very countercultural. He is saying that we do not have a right to an opinion to decide if something is right and wrong. You do not have the right to decide if this is sin or that is sin, regardless of what makes you happy. He's saying that we do not have a right to decide what makes God angry or what makes God happy, regardless of what is going on with our family and friends. He's saying that we do not have a right to interpret the Bible how we would like to, regardless of what makes us feel uncomfortable or what culture is saying. He's saying we do not have the right to interpret Scripture or deciding which parts of the Bible we want to believe. And he's saying that we cannot do even what Pilate did, who kind of throws his hands up in the air and saying, ah, what is truth? Because really no one can get to the bottom of what truth is. I had a child in confirmation class many years ago. And I remember his, her mother was a member of our congregation, a Christian woman, but her father was a member of a non-Christian church. And one time in catechism class, she asked me the question. She said, you know, my dad says that all religions lead to the same place. That it doesn't matter which religion you are, we all end up in heaven someday anyways. And so I said to her, well, let's look at a section of the Bible. So we looked at one verse. We looked at John 14, verse 6. It says this, and Jesus is speaking here. He says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And as we talked about this verse a little bit, I could see this look of stress on her face as she started to come to the realization that either Jesus is right, and he is the truth, the way, the only way, and he is the only way to get to the Father, or her Father's right. She knew that she was faced with that difficulty. And even more so, she knew that if this was right, if Jesus was right, it meant that her father was not going to be in heaven someday because he did not believe in Jesus. So it wasn't simply a confusion of the truth. It was that she didn't want to believe the truth. And that's exactly what Satan is after. But what we see in our lesson is amazing. We see our Savior who stands up for truth even if he's the only one and with a crowd of people calling him a fake and a liar, he stays relatively quiet. Even though I believe it would have been fairly simple for him to just say a few things to get out of this mess and not be crucified, Jesus stayed quiet because he was determined to go to the cross for those people who called him a liar and for those people who called him a fake. 
he was determined to go to the cross for you and me as well. People who at times question and who at times doubt the very truth that he gave to us. But he didn't stop there. He didn't just come to testify to the truth when he was in this world. He didn't just come to die on that cross for you and me. No, thousands of years later, he comes to us into our hearts so that we can believe that which the world calls a lie. So that we can trust in that which our sinful nature struggles to even comprehend. If you think about it, it is amazing what we believe. It's a miracle what we believe. We believe in a God that we can't prove exists who sent his son Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago, who died on the cross and, and miraculously came back to life three days later. And we believe that because of that, we're going to be in this place called heaven, a place that we've never seen before and a place that we can't prove exists either. So it's the miracle of faith where God came to us. Jesus came to us in our hearts so we could believe something that the world calls a lie. Throughout Jesus' life, he never said things like, I think, or in my opinion. No, the words that he used were very specific. He said, I tell you the truth with confidence. He came to declare the truth. And he gives to us a book in the Bible, which is the truth. This is what it says in, in John 8. He says, to the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. That is, Jesus equates the teachings of the Bible to the truth. And he says that truth that's in the Bible, that gives you freedom. It sets you free. Freedom from guilt, so that you know that your sins are forgiven. Freedom from a fear of punishment, so that you know that you are one with the Lord now. Freedom from doubt and questioning and freedom to know that there will come a day when we will live eternally in heaven. Now, I personally have been a Christian for as long as I can remember. And I couldn't imagine, although I know that there are some of you watching today who can imagine, can remember what it was like to not believe. Can only imagine what it would be like to not have that safety net of knowing that even when all this is happening in our community and in our world, to not have that safety net of the Lord that we know we have. Couldn't imagine what it would be like to not know on the day of my death if I'm going to be in heaven or hell. I couldn't imagine what it would be like to be in a state where I'm very sick and ill and not knowing if there is even life after death. But God has gifted us with something incredible. He not only came to us 2,000 years ago, he comes into our heart so that we believe those truths. Freedom, real freedom, which is found in truth. Now, this whole sermon series has been based on the fact that the Son of God, Jesus Christ, he goes to war for us in our place. And today we're thinking specifically about how he did that in the face of the lies of the world with the truth. And what our Savior has done is he came and proclaimed the truth 2,000 years ago. He put that truth into our hearts so that we can know it and believe it despite what the world says. And now he takes that truth and puts it into our hands and on our lips. I'm going to share this verse for you. This is, comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 10. It says, Though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. St. Paul's point is that the war that we wage is a very different type of war than the world is used to. It's not a war with a virus. It's not a battle with our financial situation. It's not even a war fought with weapons like swords and guns. No. It's a war, a war of words, of truth. I believe that there has never been a time in the history of the world, well, at least in my lifetime, when people have been so ready to listen to the truth. People are asking questions. People are searching for answers. They want to know what's right and what's wrong in a world that's filled with lies and opinions, in a world that fills with news stories and conspiracy theories that they just can't trust. Is not this the time maybe to talk to one of your friends, one of your family members who, who 
who you know needs to hear the truth and who previously wasn't ready to listen. The Lord has given us that truth. He's put it on, into our hands and on our lips so we can share it with them. God's blessings as we do that together. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We'll continue with the offering. During the offering, you can see there's a slide up that shows the different options for electronic giving. And there'll be a special music during this offering. There is a Redeemer. We'll pray together Luther's evening prayer. In the name, the name of the, the Father, Father, and of and the, the Son, Son, and of the and Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit. Amen. Amen. I, I thank you, my, my Heavenly Father, Father through, through Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, your dear Son, Son that you have graciously kept me this day. Forgive me all my sins, and graciously keep me this night. Into your hands I commend my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the wicked foe may have no power over me. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We'll continue with our closing hymn, All Praise to Thee, My God, This Night. <laughs> 